Let's take a closer look at Smart Materials in 3D Coat. If you come to the right side of the interface, you can find it under the Smart Materials tab. If you click right here, you can access different subfolders for different material types. You have a number of default material types in various subfolders, but I added some third-party material packs to my own collection. As of this recording, the single best third-party resource is Michael Bitsakis' Gumroad page. He has a very large collection, and practically all of them are very low cost in nature. You can pick and choose different materials and add to your own collection. I'll add a link to his Gumroad page in the comment section below, as well as the forum thread where he regularly updates as he adds new content. Among those that come with 3D Coat is the default list or subfolder. It also has others such as plastic, metals, organics, paints, it even has cartoon, so we'll go back to metals. All I have to do is click on one of these, I'll choose one here for this camouflage pattern. The first thing you'll notice is that the thumbnail is highlighted, but it doesn't actually apply it yet. You, the user, have to utilize either the paintbrush, the airbrush, or the fill tool. You can use the paintbrush with different selection marquees. For example, if I wanted to use the paintbrush as a fill tool, I could use maybe a rectangular lasso and uncheck ignore back faces. But the fill tool is a little bit easier to use because you can simply click a part and it will fill it. I'm going to undo. The other thing you'll notice is you have these two panels that pop up whenever you select a smart material. This one is the material preview window. You can scale it. You can see that it's rendering a preview of what this material is going to look like based upon the channels that you have enabled. It's also based on parameters that you have here in the toolbar as well, such as opacity. If I have the color channel enabled, but my opacity is way down, I'm not going to see much. This does not have much of a glossiness to it, so let me choose a metal. If I were to disable glossiness, the only thing that's previewed is just the color and the depth. Okay, so I'm going to go back to camouflage. The second pop-up is the preview options panel. It has options for transforming the projected image as well as other related adjustments. You can use these widgets to rotate the overall image. You can scale it. If you drag to the right, you'll notice that it scales it down. If you drag to the left, it scales it up. You can squash or stretch along a specific axis. And you can close the material altogether here, or at the very beginning here. Now with the Fill tool, you do have options to fill the entire layer, no matter how many objects I may have, or surface materials. If I fill the layer, it's going to fill everything. However, you can isolate that by simply going to your Paint Objects panel or your Surface Materials and either hiding or locking those surface materials or paint objects. When I apply this, I'm going to lock the barrel and I'll go ahead and fill the entire layer. The quickest way to apply a smart material, if you want to apply it to everything, is to simply right click and choose fill whole layer. It's the same as clicking here. So let's do that. Fill whole layer. And remember, we have our barrel locked, so it should not apply anything to the barrel. And there you have it. So let me go back and I'm going to undo that. Okay, let's look at our preview options panel a little bit more in depth. On the left hand side, you can use color correction. I'll 
turn that off. You have tiling. You can lock or unlock the image. You can reset it to its default. You can flip it along the X axis or the Y axis. I'll just reset it. I'll scale it back down. And you can change the opacity if you are using a particular projection type like uh, from camera. You'll notice you have this image here. Let's choose reset. And I can scale it. You may have seen in other videos the 2D gizmo. You can right click on the little yellow dot and now you have a 2D gizmo. As you scale or rotate you'll see a numeric value for that scale or rotation. You can left mouse click hold and hit the spacebar to enter a value numerically. To put that back I'll do the same thing. I'll just left mouse click and hold while I hit the spacebar and I'll hit zero to put it back. This little widget here will move the gizmo which can be handy if you're trying to rotate around a particular point. So let's say I wanted to rotate this image around the front portion of this barrel cover. Left mouse click and drag the center point to move it. To hide the gizmo, you can click the X or right click on the center dot. You can also distort the image if you need. The camera option as well as UV mapping will yield a flat thumbnail image. Sometimes that's what you want. For example, if you are storing a decal to use in the Smart Material Editor, in the upper right hand corner under the preferred mapping type, you would choose from camera. So when I hit save in just a few seconds, it will change now. Let's switch that to cube mapping, save. Now we're back to seeing a thumbnail. And our thumbnail will be based on the HDRI map that we have chosen now. Let's change that to something a little bit brighter. We could use some type of studio environment or maybe an outdoor environment that's very bright like this. Let's refresh the preview. Okay, so I'll go back to this one. I'll collapse this window. And let me use the paintbrush. You want to be careful to note ahead of time that you're on the right layer. For example, if you're on a normal map layer, you won't see anything. So let's create a new layer. And now, if I want, I can use my brush. But what if I want to quickly fill this in? I don't want it on this rubber grip, but I do want it on the plastic parts. One way that you can do that is if you have already separated it in your UV maps, you can actually find that UV map. Let's go ahead and dock this to the inside. Scale it up. In the upper right hand corner, we will go to the one that has this particular UV shell. I can scale it up. With the fill tool active, I can rapidly fill individual shells with a single click. You could also use the paintbrush with a shape draw mode to select one or more shells. You can drag, select, and fill the entire UV map this way, or when using the fill tool, you can choose surface material. That's going to load this pop-up that will allow you to select it. And I can hit OK. I'll hit the delete key to remove all that, or I could hit Control Z to undo. Again, I can isolate it to individual shells by clicking on each individual shell. So that's a bit large. 
I'll undo that. I'll bring up my preview window. So let's reset the scale. There we go. Let's go ahead and click on our shell. 